Good morning everyone and welcome back to the two-headed wolf gaming channel and majesty 2 a game which i haven't played in a very long while however something about playing last epoch recently creating those characters going on quests and leveling up reminded me of this title and it's actually a really cool one if you haven't seen majesty 2 before and there's a good chance you haven't it came out in 2009 that's 15 years ago it's mind-blowing you are it is a real-time strategy and you are the king of a kingdom and your job is pretty much to rule and protect it by bringing in heroes, sending them on quests. With the loot that they receive from those quests, they return back and you put down shops where they will have to pay money in order to resupply and upgrade in order to go on even harder quests. Well, how do you get the money in the end? You send your tax collectors out and they will be gathering money from all of the buildings from your entire kingdom and thus an economy is born. And it's a really nice balance. If you like what you see today, trust me, you can go and pick up Majesty 1 as well. The mechanics are there, the graphics are slightly older, you might even have to take it on GOG to be a bit more stable, but either way, it's a really cool title, try it out for yourself. But let's get into it, we're gonna start with the campaign over here. Ardenia, glorious Ardenia. For the last five centuries, descendants of the great king have sat upon this throne. Indeed, was the great king our first ruler, who united the lands from the southern seas to the northern fields. He whose blade was the death of a thousand foes. And each king thereafter followed the tradition, slaying dragons, hunting down necromancers, and exterminating legions of goblins and rats. Thus, each in their time came to be known as great. But our good King Leonard was born to hard times. The necromancers of old had long since been vanquished, and the rats had grown small and pitiful. And as he grew older, our king came to fear the worst, that his portrait might never hang in the hall of the great kings. Though he had yet to prove his mettle, the blood of a hero ran swift in his veins. Thus, our brave king, in his wisdom, determined that he would summon up the most terrible baron of hell. For indeed, all of Ardania would sing the praises of any mortal who could slay such a beast. And so, applying all their skill and concentration, the court mages performed the terrible ritual and the demon lord did appear. Leonard never wavered, but stood locked in his deadly contest for five long days. But alas, in the end, the demon beast prevailed. And so that spawn of hell took Leonard's place on the throne. Since then, many princes and dukes have perished in futile effort to destroy the beast. Darkness and despair have fallen over our day. But now I have found you, your majesty, the last heir of the great king's bloodline. You, our only hope. Your kingdom awaits you, sire. Man, I, I love that narrator. I feel like 30% of this game's charm is just that narrator. And as you've seen, the game combines a good story with silly elements just to keep you entertained as you are playing along but there is a lot going on here this is where we start in the kingdom of ardenia there are three dlcs in total which are connected by a story so if you want to follow through you just go through each and every one of them one by one here we have a bunch of missions on the map we have prerequisite missions to complete in order to unlock them and if you play the game if you want to try it again you can go with the randomized button here at of the map which says randomizes location of monster dens places of construction of temples and trading posts this dramatically affects the difficulty of the mission what does that mean well let's say an example an absurd example but let's say that you are hunting for a dragon on a certain map if the dragon then spawns near your kingdom that definitely influences the level of difficulty for that map right but there we go we're gonna start here 
with this tutorial mission. Now, I'm not going to read through the tutorial. I'm just going to skip through, but I'm going to explain a few elements here and there if you've never seen the game before, just to familiarize yourself with it in a more relaxed manner before we start jumping into further and further missions. So, let's start with this one right here. Greetings, your majesty. Welcome to my humble mansion. Centuries ago, it was granted to my family by one of the great rulers of Ardania. We all have hope you shall become one of the great kings yourself. But first, you must learn the secrets of statecraft. My mansion will be just fine for this purpose. It, uh, well, it's seen better days. I had planned to put it on the market, maybe look for something a little cozier. On the water, perhaps. Your Majesty wouldn't happen to know a good real estate agent, would you? The problem is, wolves have recently infested the neighborhood. They keep eating my chickens and knocking over my garbage cans. Why, I've had three stewards quit this very week. The first part of your training will be to deal with these pests, Your Majesty. Hopefully before the price drops too low. A new quest for you, Your Majesty. First, Your Majesty. Good. First, Your Majesty, we need to protect the kingdom. And here is where we start. I guess I'll leave it on, not on pause, but on very low speed until I explain a few things. This is the Royal Palace. This is the main building that we have to guard and protect and everything else. The Royal Building is providing us with peasants, which will be our construction workers. They move around the kingdom, they repair buildings, they build new buildings. Tax collectors. Their job is to go around from building to building, collect taxes, and then return them back to your Royal Palace. That's how you make money. The fact that they have to go out in order to collect taxes also means that they are getting exposed to enemy attacks which happens more and more frequent as you expand and play through the game which means that if they have a lot of money on them before they come back and they die you just lost yourself a lot of money and then we get a royal guard here the royal guard is really good in the beginning it it is quite a tanky unit it doesn't level up at all but it is good early on to have offer some basic protection against enemies later on in the game they become sort of a i don't know target a sort of a distraction until you can throw your real heroes at the enemies otherwise they get out leveled either way as you can see this, this is a house over here. Now, these peasant houses are getting built automatically. You have no control over them at any point. They will be built automatically as your kingdom expands, as you play along, and you are going to get more peasants from it, meaning more construction workers, which in turn means that you are going to build faster, expand faster. Be, you'll be able to maintain your kingdom a lot better as you expand, but you'll also have to protect them because they are very vulnerable. So you'll have to figure out how do you protect, how you put down certain buildings in order to maximize the, the bonuses or the defensive capabilities that they offer or the economical capabilities and so on and so forth. We'll start with the main building here, the first building that which they ask us to build. It's a guardhouse, archers in the guardhouse, attacks approaching enemies, garrisons one guard and acts as a depository for tax collectors. So we're placing down one of these towers, it shoots at enemies Long story short, once you've chosen an appropriate site, your royal peasants will begin construction. Yes, royal peasants will begin construction. So, at this point, we are also going, as soon as this building is complete, we're also going to get another one of these guards. It's a weaker one than this royal guard, but it still offers us some protection. And the other thing which said here, the access a depository for tax collectors, means that in order to have your tax collectors bring back your taxes, you won't have to have them move all the way to the royal palace. So as your kingdom expands, if you put down one of these towers somewhere on the edge, your tax collectors can leave some of the money there and thus reduce the chances that they will die with money on them. We're just going to wait here until this tower is completed. We can go to speed 5 until it's done. You know, this is the tutorial section. It's not going, not a whole lot of things will be going on. But I do recommend that you try the game out. <laughs> Your Majesty, a new building is complete. Your Majesty, it is not becoming for the king to take to the battlefield himself. Yes, so at this point we need to bring in 
our first heroes. They ask us to build the Rangers Guild. Allows us to hire Rangers, allows us to research and sell special abilities for Rangers, and allows us to research the Eagle Eye spell. You'll see what happens there in a second. But as you can see, automatically, this house has been built here, a bit further away from our kingdom, so we'll... Or our main keep and we'll have to figure out how do we protect this so that it doesn't get destroyed if it gets destroyed not a whole lot happens however you might be losing some of this income and some of this money temporarily these four houses give us 20 gold per cycle here per day the keep is offering us 50 gold per day and this house is also offering us 50 gold per day these houses will keep gathering money until the tax collector goes by and collects the money from it. So if they get destroyed while they have a lot of money, once again, it's pretty bad for our economy. It's a really nice and intricate system that this game has in has put together here and I absolutely love it. Love it. Let's put down a Ranger's Guild here. Your Majesty. Once your peasants have finished building the guild, we'll start hiring heroes. You don't have to worry about trees getting cut down, it's only graphical, you don't need trees, you are not actually cutting wood or anything like that. Here we have our tax collector, so 50 gold here, he's going by, he took the gold, he's bringing it home. Now if he had more houses here and there, he would be visiting multiple houses. Your Majesty, a new building is complete. Okay, we've completed our Rangers Guild, so at this point we can bring in Rangers. Eagerly respond to explore flags and best of all heroes in battles against beasts. You have different hero tabs which will be good against different enemies. Like you would consider in something like it. You know, I think this has been taken from all RTS games especially. I advise you to upgrade the guild, Your Majesty. So this was like the common tactic in Age of Empires and things like that to, to have these sort of Land mechanics. Like rock, paper, scissors type of mechanics. And here we have our very first ranger. You can see he starts with basic range weapon and basic leather armor which provides Land him with plus 10 to next. melee defense and range defense. And if we take a look here in the character panel, you can see he has all sorts of stats. These are randomized so you can get some really good heroes with really good roles that you'll want to keep them for later missions. They also have potion slots. They have heroes inventory, stuff that they can gather from around the map. Hero statistic we've seen, a description of what they are and what they do. And they also have hero abilities. They have a basic range attack, these rangers, which inflicts damage on single target. And it shows us that it does the range damage that we have here in the stats, right? So it does nine damage. And he also has another ability called Hunter Shot. Inflicts large number, a large number of damage on animals, and ranged attack is range damage times four. So that is a 36 in this situation because this one has nine. There we have it. So this is where we are at as far as building moves. We're gonna upgrade it to the next level so that we can unlock the next ability. I like all the games in which upgrading buildings and things like this changes the visuals. Your characters will also change in looks as they level up. Every five levels they get a new hat, they get a new piece of gear on them. So you're starting to see the veterancy on them. There's nothing else to build at the moment. I am just gonna quickly go forward. Peasants do go to sleep. So they're not always out and about. Multiple houses means that you are rolling them in and out a lot more often, thus make the whole experience a lot smoother but you won't have like 30 people 30 peasants at once building one building so that doesn't happen it's a really nice balance there as you can see the rangers are eager to explore so they've already gone out and they're exploring swamps this being a tutorial area they're not going to find a whole lot a new quest for you your majesty okay we have a new quest now to, to set out an exploration flag and we've also unlocked here, with the level 2 ranger skill, we have unlocked the ability to give accurate shot. Inflicts large damage, ranged attack, 3 times the ranged damage. This one does not have to be cast on a beast. 
you know, as this hero ability, it says inflicts large damage on enemies. It's on animals. It's only on animals. It doesn't do it on anything else. So accurate shot does it on everything. So we're going to pick this up. And the other thing that you need to know is that just because I've upgraded this ability here does not mean that this ranger will automatically get that skill. He will have to return to the ranger's guild and he will have to learn it himself. Your and now let's also put down an exploration flag. Either by clicking here the explore flag or right clicking like this puts down an exploration flag. And I can put down a reward on how much do I want to give heroes who go on this sire. mission. You can see that if I have 500 mal bounty here, it's two, time to replenish your trip. two of the three rangers are heading towards the quest. You can even see it here. If it has the green quest scroll, it means that they are on an exploration mission. This one is sleeping at the moment so, or going home. That is why he's not interested in this quest. But you can leave down some of these areas and... Just increase the amount of reward that you are offering depending on how many heroes you want involved in those quests depending on how much money you want them to have after the mission as you can see since they've completed the mission they've scouted out this wolf's den and they this one has not received because he was too far but this one has received the full amount of 500 so now he can go back to some shops spend that money and we will get back those money in taxes. But that's how the economy goes. You'll see more and more examples as we're continuing through the mission. But for now, let's just go like this. I'll put down a bunch of flags. Let's see, what do I need to do as far as objectives? Build a marketplace now. So that is our next mission. Economic Buildings Marketplace. Brings considerable income, allows you to research and sell potions, and sells artifacts. So we're gonna place down a market. I will place it down over here. i remove this flag. Whenever you're putting down a bounty, if afterwards you cancel it, if you have money on it and you decide to cancel it, you are gonna lose the money. Once you put the bounty on something, you cannot take it back. Be careful with that. Your Majesty, a new building is complete. There we go. So now we have the marketplace here, and we can research health potion. Restores a portion of health. Your that is great. Our research is complete. You know you As you can see, we're getting 250 gold per cycle on the marketplace so this is a really important building for us and it can bring a lot of value we're also being going to build a clerics guild allows us to hire clerics allows us to research and sell special ability for clerics and allows us to research holy heal spell so we're getting our very first healers and i'm gonna place it over here to so be in range of the marketplace and thus protect it from enemies Whenever you are placing down one of these buildings and you want to bring in more, the cost keeps going up. Clerics are able to are, have the ability to heal your heroes. That's why it's very expensive. But rangers are really good at exploring and they are a lot cheaper. So you might want to have more of those. And as you see, our kingdom expanded again. We're getting two more houses and all of a sudden, what is this? Well, we have a sewer because our civilization increased. But what does the sewer do? Well, it's bringing in rats and dire rats. So, all of a sudden, because of our expansion, we are getting the sewers, and from the sewers, enemies spawn. Which means that we are going to get harassed, or will be under pressure constantly to protect our kingdom. I'll put down another tower here, just to distract them, not have these rats destroy and kill our people wildly especially when we send certain heroes on missions clerics can heal best of all heroes in battle against undead and we also have the spell sacred heal which allows us to spend money in order to restore the health of a friendly target there we go we have our very first cleric here a very bold one at that 
And they start with the ability to Holy Heal, restores part of a friendly target's health, requires mana, and it's six times the magic ability here. That's the amount of healing that it does. And also magic attack, a basic attack with magic. Which is my path? So we're researching here. Your Highness, our research is complete. Our research is complete. It's asking us to cast Sacred Heal on someone. Just as a tutorial once again, we're going to do it. Completed, and there we go. I believe, Your Majesty, that you are ready to fight some wolf. So now it's telling us that we need to clear out these wolves then. We will put down, for the very first time, an attack flag. You can see wolf then will start spawning wolves. And as time goes along, they become tougher, they become stronger. Like, there's many things which influence the strength of some of these buildings as well. So you might want to make plans of clearing them out early or things like that. If you right click on an enemy or one of these enemy buildings, you will put down one of these attack flags. And you can put down a bounty on them of how much you want. Let's say that we'll put 2000 just because we have a lot of money and we want as many heroes to go for it as possible. But there's another thing which you need to take into consideration. By putting all that bounty out, all of these heroes are now going towards the wolves then. Well, the question is, who's going to protect us against the rats which will spawn in? That, that's where the balance... That's where you have to think about your home affairs as well. It's not just about going out. And look at this. See, we already have rats coming out and attacking in a pack together. So if we didn't have these defenses here, they would start nibbling at our houses and taking them down. Our heroes are now battling here. They've taken down the wolf. Whenever you see one of those stars come up, you will, it will mean that they level up. And if we reach level 5 on any of these units, you will see its look change. But I don't know if it's gonna happen on this one. The quest is completed, sire. A tremendous victory, sire. Well, perhaps I exaggerate a bit, but it was well played. Already, the real estate well, value for my mansion has increased. You have great potential, your majesty. Onward to victory and the throne of Ardania. And that's it. That is the first mission. We can now keep one of these heroes if we felt like one of these heroes had a lot of potential. Like if you look at a ranger, for example, and you see that the range attack for him is really powerful or he has a really high agility level, you might want to keep him around, you know, in further missions. The same goes here for spellcasters. At the moment, I don't know what, I don't want to take any of them with us. You can recruit them in a separate building. It's the Hall of Lords. And they keep all of their gear, they keep all of their skills, they keep absolutely everything. However, the stronger they are, as you can expect, the more expensive they will be. And you can even remove, uh, rename them, which is a really nice feature. But we are going to not select any lord as we're going forward. And we're going to start with this mission next. I'm going to go refill my cup of coffee and we'll do another mission for today. And I'm back with a fresh cup of coffee in my hand and now we're going for the Engines of Commerce, which is still partially a tutorial mission. However, we are given a higher level of liberty to build however and whatever we want, at the same time getting a higher challenge from the world around us. Good morning, your majesty. Still an early riser, I see. I have news for you while we wait for your breakfast. Yesterday, after you retired, I continued negotiation with the head of the local merchants' guild. Well, the guild is ready to sign a trade agreement with you. Believe me, sire, the kingdom needs this. There are certain concessions that need to be met, but the investment is well worth it. Soon a steady stream of gold will flow into your treasury. Ah, your breakfast has arrived. Well, the details will wait. Bon appetit, sire. Your Majesty, to develop trade, you need to build the marketplace first. So now it wants to you, teach us Majesty. about trading. The first part of this mission is to go here and explore this dock. 
these early missions, I know them pretty much. But once we explore that dock, we will need to protect the caravan. Still, let's take a look around us. I think the first building which I want to build is the Rangers Guild. They are quite good because they shoot from a distance, they can run away, especially when they are in danger, it's, they're quite fast, and they also are quite cheap, plus good against beasts. I feel like most of the time Rangers are the perfect fit for the beginning of the game. I will also want to put down a marketplace to make sure that we're bringing in those health potions and thus helping us with, with survivability, right, for our heroes. And finally, I'm also going to place down a Clerics Guild. They are quite expensive. The building is expensive. They are expensive. They can die quite quickly early on, as they are not as quick as Rangers. They are squishier because they're, you know, spellcasters are not warriors. However, because of their healing abilities, many times I find them to be valuable. Your Majesty, a new building is complete. And that's what we're going to do for now. So I'm going to bring three Rangers. We're not going to research Eagle at the moment. I'm not going to upgrade this. We've unlocked a few other buildings, like the Warriors Guild, which allows us to hire warriors, allows us to research and sell Your abilities Majesty, for warriors, and allows us to do complete. cult warms. Or the Rogues Guild, which allows us to bring rogues in, give them poison weapons, and allows the research of extortion ability. The extortion ability is a instant money collection ability from all of your buildings, however, they do take a portion of the cuts. So it's instant money, it's emergency money whenever you need it. I'm also going to research here the health potion, which starts a portion of health. We're now getting also mana potions if you want, and an amulet of regeneration, restoring health over the course of time. As you can see, rangers are moving around, they're going for these treasure chests as well. Some of these will contain items, like you can see here, a health potion he found. He also got an elixir of rabbit speed, which increases his movement speed by 1.5. So that's pretty cool. Let's bring in clerics, very expensive, Your but Majesty, the royal treasury is nearly empty. And we're gonna make our money back soon with a little bit of careful planning. Which is my path? We should be okay. Mm. I'm not gonna place any tower for the moment. I will wait. Okay, we have an undead in our area, a skeleton here. And as you can see, they've already engaged in combat. It's good that it happened here. If, if they were too far away from the city and maybe this skeleton would have caught only this cleric, the cleric would have died. At level 1 or level 0, they, they die quite quickly against melee warriors. Like in this situation right here. Look at that attack. So if we're not getting any healing, that can be bad. However, we got lucky here. So for a while we can not worry about anything. As far as economic buildings goes, we can bring in a blacksmith as well, which sells armors and weapons. The inn offers a place for heroes to rest and heal. It, it's unlike going here for the Cleric's Guild. That inn also tax the money. So that's giving you more money. The statue of the... Oh, it also has this. A place for parties of heroes to gather. There is a way in which you can put a party together and send them on quests, but that's a story for a different level. Statue of the King increased the enthusiasm of heroes, so that increases their willingness to go for certain missions or certain rewards, even at lower levels. We'll talk about caravans later, and that's about it for now. Okay, we have a bear up here. So there's probably a bear cave... Somewhere around that area as well. We have 900 gold. Do I want another ability here? This holy attack could be great. But I believe that I'd rather bring in more warriors. Let's start with the warriors guild first. And I am going to be placing it... Let's place it here somewhere on the front lines. I think I like that idea. And let's also scout out, let's see where those undead come from. And I'll put a bounty of 500 here. Only two interested? Three interested, okay. Now it's looking a bit better. Maybe four. Okay, I think it, we can be safe for now. I will have to be careful here. Remember that you do not control this. 
Maybe I should research the healing ability. Come on. Help. Help. A reward for my toil. As you can see, they're not really helping each other on one on one combat. But we got lucky here. She's healing herself. Her cooldown is out. We have a grave, an ancient graveyard here. And I am going to use this opportunity to actually attack it. This will constantly spawn free skeletons and send them around. And this can be very bad. You can see we're getting attacked here in the kingdom as well. So having heroes away from home sometimes is not great for us. My aim is I'll take care of it. Okay. I think we're fine at home. And in this way, the game has a really beautiful balance where you, you have your heroes going out. We also spawned in the sewer entrance here. But you, you have your heroes, you bring them into your kingdom, you send them on missions. If you put too high of a bounty or you don't keep protection at home, then you're still going to get constantly harassed here. You're going to get attacked. And you, you have to play this balancing act of protecting your home kingdom while completing a mission. And I find that to be really an interesting gameplay loop. Here we have our very first level 5 heroes. As you can see now he has a hat, has a slightly better armor and cape. Our clerics as well have grown a bit of hair, has, have some shoulder pads. So graphically speaking it looks really really good. These houses are getting destroyed. I want to put down a one of these towers for the moment. He's trying to keep this house going, but it, I don't think he's going to succeed. And I'm not going to bother too much with it at the, for now. What else should I be doing next? Well, we have our first warriors here. Not the best battle to fight against bears, but uh, uh, at least we can say that they are tanky. They are quite good against melee. So this is good for us. Two against one, we should be good. Finally, let's bring in the rogues as well, the rogues guild. I'm going to place it over here, just to try to force them to fight these rats. Because rogues are, I believe, are the squishiest warriors around. Or they might not be necessarily the squishiest, but they, since they engage in melee combat, it's the same thing as from the last epoch with the blade dancer, right? They are quite squishy for melee combat. They do a lot of damage, they can be uh, very powerful, they do a lot of hit and run, they are fairly cowardice, or fairly cowardly, so they don't fight by themselves against enemies too often, and, and thus they do hit and runs, they run away from danger most of the time, and if you give them the ability to poison enemies, then that stays with them, and thus it helps you in the long run in the killing situation. Hey, I believe that the next step is bringing in one of these armories. I could put down a, one of these inns as well. Just because we can get some extra money out of it. And we also have here the Hall of Lords, which I didn't show you because I haven't kept a hero after the last mission. This is the building that you need in order to bring in one of those heroes. Over here, maybe I'll upgrade this building to protect us against rats. We shall see whether we need it or not. As you can see, rogues, they love money, capable thieves, and avoid tough fights. They cost 100, so they're very cheap. But as I said, they're also very weak. Uh, we can give them... Rogue guilds sell heroes, the means of poisoning their weapons. We can give them this. Or we can go for inflict small damage, applies an effect inflicting small injuries over the course of time. And it does the damage of a melee attack, the poisoning. Where's the gold? Your Majesty, a new building is complete. And here are the rogues. They're looking pretty cool. Definitely a cool design on all these characters. Here we have the weapons and armors that we can research. We're gonna go for armor first. I will want our heroes to start clearing one of these areas. Let's try to go for this den. 
I'll put 600 gold on it. Most of the heroes should Majesty, be interested. The local blacksmith offers new services. Just because there's not a whole lot of cash on the line. Just yet. They're not well equipped enough to, to refuse this. I'm hoping that I can get a healer in the mission as well. Okay, we have a we have one at home. Okay, he's running away. He's now on low enough health to run away. And fortunately, he's slightly quicker than the bear. But we got engaged by another skeleton. Let's see. Yeah, it's very unfortunate when your clerics are not interested in getting into combat. He has reached level 5, so now he has a slightly better armor on him, he has a better shield. My ambition has paid off. Run away! Give me a hand! Okay. Yeah, as you can see, bears are tough. Nothing to mess with. And whenever one of these is destroyed, if they had the beast inside it, it's going to spawn out, so you're not out of the woods. But you're also getting plenty of treasures from destroying one of these places. For blacksmith, I feel like we could go this way. And just give a bunch of weapons and armors. Or the weapons research that we haven't done already. I guess we could go with some mana as well on that part Majesty, the local blacksmith offers new services we've got our first team here under the great elms pub these names are randomized your highness our research is complete let's see which one do Majesty, we want to upgrade the first local blacksmith offers new services i think i'm going to upgrade the warrior skill just because i want the crushing blow it takes large damage three times the melee attack that can be fairly useful. Cold Warms is also a useful ability. Warrior's Guild Majesty, provides apprentices the for the kingdom's defense. Or time... The magic power? Or something? I don't know how that functions exactly. But basically, it's spawning in some recruits, which will attack surrounding enemies. So if a bear comes here and starts attacking, we can distract them for a while. Your research is complete. These level 2s will be very... will be in a lot of danger. What do we have here? It's another grave. I want to explore this area and I want to take care of this ancient graveyard. Oof. Okay, he almost died there. It's not the end of the world if your heroes die, but it can be pretty dangerous. Okay, we do have some sort of a cave up north. As there are a bunch of bears here. Let's put a bounty of 500 on them. And let's also explore these for 300 maybe. Yeah, we have one who's gonna explore. On the bear then. Oof. You should not stay in this battle. Yeah, we have three bears. Definitely need to clear this area up. I can't win this battle. Yeah, if they're getting overwhelmed, they do retreat. The AI is decently smart. Not the smartest in the world. But it does the job. Mm. Let's see. Sovereign, a building has been upgraded. Good. A building has been upgraded. We're getting crushing blow. That should give us a higher chance for at least our melee warriors to, to do more damage. I'm going to get some poison for the rogues as well. Your Highness, our research is complete. And I want to clear this area up so that we can Your start Highness, building these trading posts. Looks like good eye. My ambition has paid off. My ambition has paid off. Now I'm speeding it up slightly just because there's nothing here which we care about that much anymore. My ambition has paid off. Yeah. So, we're all good. It seems like this mission was a success. We've cleared this area, there's one less spawning point for bears. And it's now our job to scout this area and to take down this bear den, because we will need to protect the caravan here. And there seems to be plenty of skeletons. Okay, let's do another 300 mission there. 
and I'm going to spend 700 more. Probably should have waited a bit until they went back and spent their money on different gear. Because we can see most of the heroes now are going back to rest and to train and to spend money. I will upgrade all of the buildings that I can just to get those extra abilities going. Let's get cold worms as well because we might get attacked by bears or other things. Here we have more houses. Wouldn't be a bad idea to put down a tower somewhere here. In preparation for building a trading post there. Let's see. Now they're out and about on a mission. He's at level 4 getting followed by two skeletons, so that's not great. Yeah, okay, he's running away, at least that's good. Everybody ran away here because of the dangers. Let's go 900 on this and I'll do another 100 on the exploration flag. <laughs> Make sure that we're gathering enough people here to fight these warriors. But with a good weapon and good armor and, and healing potions, they are decent warriors. Someone, a building has been upgraded. Cleric's skill has been upgraded, so now we can throw in one of these holy attacks. Sovereign, Let's give the ability to upgraded. for all our heroes to poison their weapons. Accurate shot for the large damage. I will research the cold warm. Oh no, I've actually activated the cold warm. Well, either way, these are the squires. They will be protecting our lands for a short while. Let's see. You. Uh, I'll put a exploration flag here. 300, is that enough? Yeah, it got the interest of one of these warriors and that's good. Let's take a look at our rogue now at level 5. Where's the goal? Getting some shoulder pass there. But with a free belly button, going in style, like any rogue. Happy to serve. I, train to serve. I guess I'll go with Eagle Eyes. A new quest for you, Your Majesty. Your Majesty, the Merchant's Guild reports that their representative couldn't come. A caravan of donkeys was sent instead. No, no, don't be insulted, sire. It's even better this way. It's common knowledge that donkeys are the engines of commerce. Tell the heroes to protect the caravan until it reaches the palace. Yes. The donkeys are the engines of commerce. We've heard that in Graveyard Keeper, right? So if you right click on a hero or if you right click on a caravan, you can put down a defense flag. Defense flags work very different than other flags because it doesn't fully consume the money unless you reach your destination it consumes it over time so you put this money heroes who are interested will arrive to, to defend it and they will start bleeding the money hundreds by hundreds until it's running out okay. we've drawn a lot of skeletons into our home base now they have no more chance of survival we're going to start researching everything that we can I guess I could upgrade this. Let's see. I think what I want to do is start putting down one, one tower over here. Because I will want to upgrade this to a trading post as well. And we can speed it up. I'll put the statue of the king Good as well. News, your Majesty. Lands and materials for the construction of trading posts were brought with this caravan. The Merchant's Guild made an assessment and have marked the places most suitable for trade with their caravans. It's time to make some gold, sire. Build some trading posts in those places. Okay. My liege, the statue of so the now king we're getting this... Trading post. This will spawn at random. Well, during the campaign, unless you click randomize, it's going to be in a fixed place. But if you click randomize, they will be spawned in a random place. And they spawn caravans, which they will bring towards your market and give you a lot of money. However, you'll have to protect them. 
If they go down, you get nothing. As you might expect. I am getting attacked by bears. This is why I wanted to put down a tower here. And fortune, the trading post does not have defenses to begin with. However, you can upgrade it to the next level. At which point you will be able to get some Your basic defenses. So caravan shuttle goods from trading post to the marketplace. Second level trading post defend themselves against enemies. That's pretty much what that does. Okay, we've cleared, easily cleared the undead over there. I'm going to go around and scout a bit more. I think I'm going to put down another mission here to make sure that we're clearing this undead. And there's probably another undead camp here. We will need to bring, build another raiding place here. Let's see, how do I do this in a way that we can survive? I'll try to put a scouting flag there with 500 on it. I think this one will be fine for a while. Your Highness, we've improved the guard tower. I'll upgrade this guard tower as well just to reduce the time that our heroes are spending here near the sewers. Your Highness, we've improved the guard tower. Okay. And now I have a lot of money. So at this point. I don't care too much about money. I am going to raise the bar up. Just trying to get as many hero out and about as possible. And go for mission completions. So we're going to do it like this. We're going to split some of this money up. Then I'm as soon as we're clearing these two areas here. I am going to place down another trading post here. Temporary increases the range of... And we can do a bit of that for exploration's sake. And in this chaotic world, look at this. 600 gold for this caravan. Reaching our market is going to be... We're going to make, be rich here. But this is how the game works. And it's fairly easy to miss. Like you, When you see constant battling on the map, it's very easy to, to miss... Some sort of a beast or enemy destroying one of your buildings or, you know, killing some of your heroes. or You lose sight of a lot. We need another exploration flag here with another thousand gold. I will put down another one of these trading posts. Maybe even put down a thousand for the protection of it. Right, well, we clear this undead and we figure out what's here. Getting some protection there sounds good. Our peasants will walk all the way to these areas. So that's why you need the extra peasants. That's why you want to protect your extra houses. Because it's going to help you in the long run. I'll research extortion as well, although I don't need it anymore. And that's it. At this moment, it's just a waiting game. Well done, your majesty. The construction of the trading post is finished. Uh, is there any finer sight than a caravan laden with riches heading to market? The Merchants Guild appreciates your business and cooperation. Now, wherever you go, you shall have the best of their donkeys at your disposal, your majesty. Now look at these heroes. Really nice, really strong. They've leveled up, they have their armors. And now we can decide to keep one of them. They will keep everything they have on them. Remember this, this is pretty important. And we're gonna look around just to see what do we want. If I look at this hero, right, he has 32 damage with everything he has on him. This hero is pretty much the same. He has better armor or equipped. However, his attack is slightly higher. And we can look around and figure out what do we want. An extra healer, a level 10 healer, would be good. Rogues, look at this. 48 damage for the rogue. So even though it has 130 health, half the health of the warrior, it's doing a little bit more than double the damage. That's the power of rogues. And I am thinking that we could either bring a warrior which taunts and attracts some of the attention. 
He could be pretty strong. Or I could bring another healer with us. And I think bringing in a healer might be a better choice. Rather than having to be a, another cleric's post. Yeah, we'll select this one. We're going to bring it with us. And there we go. But that's going to have to be it for today. Hope you have enjoyed this first look at Majesty. Well, first 15 years later look at Majesty 2. And we're going to continue going through all of these missions. I think I want to do an entire campaign at least. But it really depends on you and what you want to see as well. If you liked it, if you enjoyed it, do consider leaving a like. Helps me, helps the channel grow. And until tomorrow, I wish you all to have a wonderful day.